Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 12. I know the, the bulletin says 12 through 27. I'm going to read a few verses before that as well to put it in context. So listen to and for God's word this morning. Now concerning spiritual gifts, siblings, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. All gifts are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Now, just as a body, though one may ha- has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so... The body is not made up of one part, but many. Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as God wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. This summer, if you've been paying attention, which is okay if you haven't, it's hot out there sometimes, it's hot in here. We have been wandering through some sermons around the theme of being church. And today we'll use Paul's imagery here of the human body to paint a picture of what it means to be church. He says, you are the body of Christ. When you hear that, I don't know about you, but sometimes I hear body of Christ, I just think church. But today, in your imagination, when you hear that phrase, Think of the human body. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. To be church is to be a part, a particular part. You are a part in the larger body or community. You are one part, and not the only part, but you are an essential part of the body of Christ. Each part belongs to one another. 
like the foot and the hand belonging to your physical body, or your eyes and your ears belonging to your human body. We belong to one another, and we need one another. You, as one part of this local body of Christ, East Liberty Presbyterian Church, need the other parts of the body to function healthily and holistically. And you also have a gift that this local body of Christ, East Liberty Presbyterian Church, needs for us to function healthily and holistically. So I want you to think for a moment what is one need that you have of this church, East Liberty Presbyterian? You don't have to say it out loud, but think for a moment. What is something you came here for a particular reason at a particular time of your life because perhaps East Liberty Presbyterian Church filled a need in your life? Think of something comes to mind. Secondly, you came, perhaps attracted, drawn, to have that need met and filled in your life. But I ask you this, what is one gift that you bring to East Liberty Presbyterian Church? Think about that for a moment. If we are continue to continue to be a healthy body of Christ, we must know our gifts, and we must know our needs. We must know ourselves, therefore. And the more that we get to know ourselves, our gifts, our needs, the more we actually come to know God. Our knowledge of ourselves and God are an interconnected relationship, an ever-flowing and ever-evolving connection between knowledge of God and self. <clears throat> so I ask you this morning, who are you? No small question to ponder on a Sunday morning. Who are you? What are your gifts? What part do you play in the body of Christ? Are you a foot? A hand? A toe? A liver? An eye? Are you a visible part of the body? Are you a hidden internal organ? What's your personality like? Are you introverted or extroverted? What energizes you? What makes you exhausted? What season of life are you in right now? What makes you mad? What do you love? Where are your weaknesses and limitations in life these days? How do you like to pray? Do you want me to ask some more questions? <laughs> Friends, we have to take time to ask ourselves, who are we? <clears throat> How did God make me? Because there is no one like you in this sanctuary this morning. There is no one like you in this entire world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who are you? St. Augustine asked, how can you draw close to God when you are far from your own self? How can you draw close to God when you are far from your own self? And then he prayed, Grant, Lord, that I may know myself, that I may know Thee. This discovery of who you are is a pathway to actually knowing more about who God is. And being church begins, in my opinion, by each of us inviting God like the psalmist to search us and know us. To be alone with God and ourselves and to continually grow in the knowledge of God and ourselves. Before we give the gift of ourselves to the body of Christ or to the world, we must know ourselves, become ourselves. We cannot give what we do not first receive and know and cherish. Author Fran Furter puts it this way, attempting to give a self 
that we have never come to know is like offering a gift to someone without knowing what's in the box and without knowing whether it will hurt or help another person. Likewise, trying to offer a self to others that we have never come to accept is the same as giving something to another that we don't even like in the first place. Friends, we have to know ourselves. We have to cherish ourselves in order to be able to give ourselves to others. Do you know this morning that you are a gift? Do you know that you belong to the body of Christ? Have you yourself accepted the gift of you? Do you like the gift that God created you to be to offer to one another and the world? Do you know the specific or particular giftedness that you are? Or are you simply offering yourself with little knowledge or acceptance of who you were made to be? No judgment there. But just ponder that this morning. Because here's the kicker. <laughs> if we have not accepted the gift of ourselves in the body of Christ, we will struggle to see the gifts of the other parts. Does that make sense? We will struggle to see the gifts of the other parts of the body that are inevitably different from ours. It's Paul's funny and curious language. The hand cannot say to the foot, I don't need you. Or the eye cannot say to the ear, I don't belong. We will inevitably, if we don't believe that we ourselves are a gift, we will inevitably compare ourselves to others and it will rob us and the other of the joy of being a gift to the church and the world. If we don't have an accurate and sober assessment of our own sense of self, we will either do one of two things. We will either think too highly of ourselves and have no need for others, and then we will overfunction and be overactive, perhaps thinking we are indispensable and don't need the other parts. And the whole body of Christ will suffer when we do that. Or, we will think too lowly of ourselves and think we're not needed in the body of Christ and we will underfunction and be underactive, perhaps not believing that we have anything to offer and that you don't even belong and the whole body of Christ will suffer. Some of you know that my wife is a yoga instructor and as I was thinking about this last night, I just got back from vacation, so I was writing my sermon yesterday. Don't judge me for that. I said, Katrina, I need a good example of this in the human body. She said, give me a minute. She said, the thyroid. Oh. I had to Google it. And I know there's some medical personnel in our midst, so I speak this with a little fear and trepidation. But any overactive or underactive part of the body of Christ has damaging and rippling effects out into the entire body of Christ, just like the thyroid. The thyroid, if it's properly functioning, controls our metabolism, how our body uses energy. And when you have an underactive thyroid, our metabolism slows down, and it can affect your heart. Your memory, it causes you to feel tired, gain weight. The whole body begins to suffer. If you have an overactive thyroid, it speeds up your metabolism and can cause a rapid heart rate, weight loss, increased appetite and anxiety. The whole body begins to suffer because of that overactive or underactive small hidden part of your body. So it is, friends with the body of Christ. We cannot say to ourselves or to another, you don't belong. 
We cannot say to ourselves and to others, I don't need you. We are all but one part of the body of Christ, and at the very same time, we are an essential part of the body of Christ. As Paul says, there should be no division in the body. Its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. In Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Friends, we belong to one another. Like the beautiful African Zulu phrase Ubuntu, which many translate, I am because you are. I am because you are. My existence and flourishing is interwoven and interconnected with your existence and flourishing and vice versa. Take a look around you, literally. Look down your pew, Look behind you. These are the people that you belong to. These are the people that, because you are, they are. We are meant to be interdependent. We need each other. We belong to one another. We cannot be who we were created to be without one another. As the great African-American hymn says, I need you to survive. We cannot bear the image of God alone. God within God's own self is the very pattern of community, living and flowing with each other, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in perfect, indivisible unity, the three in one and the one in three. We are God's image bearers and reflect God's image best in an interdependent, self-submissive, common unity with one another. Now all this imagery of the body and these invitations to be to church together is rooted in Paul's exhortation to know and see and experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Spirit has given to each and every one of us. Paul says there are a variety of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. Activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. All gifts are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually as the Spirit chooses. So let me close by just briefly reflecting on the gifts that the Spirit gives in the church. The Spirit comes upon us and within us, each and every one of us, and gives us diverse and unique gifts. First thing is this, they're gifts. A gift given generously, kindly, graciously. You didn't earn it. It's been given to you. Second, they are from the Spirit. Paul sounds almost like a broken record here. Same Spirit. The Spirit gives. The Spirit gives. The Spirit gives. The one and only Spirit who gives. Okay, we get it, Paul. A gift given. Think of a birthday, an anniversary. God graciously hands you a gift through the Holy Spirit that is to be unwrapped and unfolded through the unfolding of your life to be shared with everyone. Thirdly, Spirit gives gifts to everyone and chooses the distribution of those gifts. This is not like a white elephant exchange at Christmas time. Ooh, I want the gift that Polly has. Can I get that gift that Tom has? You want to exchange gifts? No, Spirit decides who gets what gifts. And there's variety and diversity, and this is necessary for the body of Jesus to function. Fourthly, Spirit gives gifts to the church for the common good. The common good. I was chatting with Gerald before the service today and telling him a little bit about what I was going to say, and he said to me, oh, we need that. 
to have a perspective that the gift that we've been given is for the common good to build up the body of Christ. And therefore, lastly, gifts are not given to show who is the most and least spiritual. By focusing on the more public or extraordinary gifts, but rather they are to demonstrate and usher in and build up the body of Christ in the world. And therefore, comparison of your gifts to someone else's gifts or vice versa robs you and them of all of its joy and goodness. The spiritual gift God has given you is not for you or everyone to see in this church. And for us, it's for us to work together with those gifts in perfect harmony, beautiful fluidity. Imagine a human body dancing exercising, serving, building, playing. This is the end game of all of us using our gifts together. And so consequently, we should not be prideful about our spirit-given gifts. We cannot think that we are the most essential part, nor can we look down on others for not having our gifts Our spiritual gifts are not some kind of spiritual resume builder. It is a gift given to you to point to Jesus and his kingdom and used to love others. Nor can we be complacent with our spirit-given gifts. We cannot pretend we don't have any gifts or hide them or neglect them. They are needed for our community to function. And finally, if we were to read all the way into the next chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, everybody knows that chapter, right? What's Paul's point? Do it all with love. Love must compel the use of our gifts. In fact, Paul says, all the gifts that you've been given, they're going to go away someday, either when you die or when Jesus returns to make everything right. But one thing will last. Love. If you use your gifts without love, Paul says they're just like a noisy gong, drawing attention to itself and not the purpose of the furthering of the community of God. Friends, I believe that we here at East Liberty Presbyterian Church are in a time where we need our little body of Christ to become more aware of our gifts and ask ourselves if we're using them to the best of our ability for the common good of the church. So I encourage you to ask others. It's one of the best ways you can discover your own gifts is to say, what do you see in me? What am I good at? What might the Holy Spirit gift wrapped to give me in who I am? And ask God and God's self to fill you with the Holy Spirit and show you the gifts she has given you. Paul tells us a few chapters later in the 14th chapter of Corinthians, eagerly desire spiritual gifts and excel in those that build up the church. What is your invitation this morning? Where are you sensing that spirit moving, the one who gave you gifts in your own life, so that you might become the fullest and richest and most embodied you in the body of Christ? Perhaps you need to begin to seek and discover your gifts. Perhaps you need some time with God to uncover your own resistance to use your gifts. Perhaps you need to stop over-functioning, rest, and trust others to use their gifts. Perhaps you need to step up and begin giving more of yourself and your gifts to the body of Christ. Perhaps you need to practice asking for help and receiving the gifts of others. 
I don't know what your invitation is this morning. But wherever the Spirit's invitation is for you today, may we all together pursue love and seek to excel in our gifts for the building up of the church and the common good. Amen.